Hello and welcome to another macro screencast. It occurred to me that it might be useful to show how some of the different macros can be put together into an overall work pattern, hence the idea of editing a book. Obviously no two jobs are the same and indeed no two editors are the same in the way they like to work. But if I show you the pattern that I use it might give you some ideas as to how you might use the various macros. Anyway, to help give us an overview of what I do, I've done a sort of crude diagram made out of words, which is here. Uh, may, I may be good at doing macros, but graphics and presentations I'm rubbish. Anyway, here's the start. I'm representing the files by words in bold type, and the macros I use are going to be in italic. And to save space, I've abbreviated some of the macro names. Right, so for most of my jobs they come in as individual chapter files and this suits the way I like to work. Indeed if a job comes in as a single file I immediately chop it up into a number of smaller ones and I've got macros that will do that. Uh, if you need them just search my book for the word chop. Well that's the end of my script and so I'm going to try and do the rest of the video as a single take. So you'll have to forgive my stops and starts it's going to be a WYSIWYG video. What you see is what you get. Right, so what we've got here is the first stages and this first st stage here are what I call um, mechanical type macros. In other words, it's not using any of my intelligence as an editor. It's just producing raw information by analysing the text. So to start off with, I've got to combine, these are all my uh, chapter files and I've got to combine those together into a single file which I call all text and for that I use the multi-file text macro. So that for that I come up with a file that looks like this. Um, all the individual chapter names come with um, just square brackets around so I can find them. If I use instant find down I can jump from chapter to chapter there so I can see that it's pulled together all of the different chapters and it hasn't just pulled in the text from the files it's also uh, represented the bold and the italic and one or two of the other format features. Okay let's put that away for the moment Right, so we, we do various analyses. Uh, first one is spelling error lister. So that generates uh, a spelling error list. I've done a video for it, so you should be able to have a look at that. If I use my smart finder uh, macro and I type SE, that will take me to the spelling error list on that all text file. So those are the spelling errors that it's found. And obviously I've then got to uh, work out which of those are, are really errors and we, when, whether to do anything about them later in the process but that's the analysis anyway of the spelling. Let's move it out of the way. Uh, then the next one is hyphenation. So let's have a look at the hyphenation list. So it generates a list like this of words say like back up there which occur of as single words, two words or hyphenated and again I've um, done a video of that so you can have a look at that. Then we analyze the proper nouns and we end up with a file like this. So you can look through and see what words you've got which are likely to be problems later in the uh, process. That's proper noun lies. Um, and if I bring my all text back, um, two macros that I haven't uh, yet done Oh, I've forgotten Dockerlize. I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, I've got US, UK count. Um, so if we want to know whether the incoming file is US or UK, we run that one. So that's uh, UK, UK, US count. So if I run that, uh, you can, may not be able to see it, but down here it's saying UK 5, US 8. It's working through and finding out any words that are spelling errors in UK but not US or spelling errors in US but not UK and working out um, how many of each there are. 
Sorry, that was my wife just come in. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if I if I stop that with control break, theoretically you can stop any macro with control break. Um, doesn't always work, but so I can then say I want to end that because I've got as far as seeing that there were whatever it was, 86 UK and 23 US, whatever. So that I can t find out whether it's a UK or a US file. So if I put that out the way again, oh no, I still want it, don't I? For IZIS count, so let's try that. IZ, IZIS count, there it is. So if I run that, uh, uh, let's uh, just ignore that and do it again. IZ, me and my wife clunking around in the background. Run, highlight them. No, I don't want to highlight them, just want to, I want to know how many there are. And it's told me I've got 185 IS and 125 IZs. Okay, so that's useful information. Right, so the other um, macro I use is Dockerize. Where's me Dockerize? Here we go. Um, so this is uh, runs a whole series of tests on the file and you can see the sorts of things it's found like the number 10 or the word ten and um, what the this is this is numbers number patterns four digits without a comma and that's the only one there is in this one there aren't any four digit with a comma a serial uh, comma that that's only a very rough um, uh, rough and ready sort of count but it gives you some idea and what we've got underneath here in in, in uh, grade out type, these are the wildcard find and replaces I use to do those counts. And if you actually want to go and have a look at some of these, if you select uh, that wildcard search there and use instant find down wild, then it will jump to the next one that it found that it thought was a, a serial comma. So that's that. Uh, okay, that's about all there is on that one. Right, now the important thing now, having got all that information, is putting it together. And this is where the human's intelligence comes into it. Hopefully you've been given a brief by your client, you may not of course. Um, and what you then want to do is to put, pull all the information together in a, into a style sheet. Uh, well, that's what I call it. Um, so if I show you a sample one that I've got here, um, this is a this is just the sort of blank version of the style sheet that I use, and for what it's worth, it's available in my book. So there are all the different conventions and things that you might want to think about and make make decisions on to do with spelling, punctuation, various conventions on how you set out equations and all these sorts of things. I'm technical obviously in the stuff I do. Um, so that's the style sheet and then below that we've got a word list and this is actually what, not the dummy one, this is one that's from my last job that I put in there just so you can see the sorts of things I end up with, certain special words and then with the words w beginning with inter and multi and nano and non and whatever I decide which ones are going to be hyphenated and which not and whether there are exceptions to that rule. Okay so when we've got the decisions made about all these various things we want to implement them and for that I use Fredit and so I create a Fredit list and I've covered the sorts of things you do uh, in a Fredit list with spelling and punctuation and some of these proper nouns that you've uh, had to you've had to correct, I've covered that in another video, and I've got ideas for other videos I'm going to do on that. Um, but the point now is that I take chapter one and I run Fredit on chapter one, and then I read chapter one. And as I'm doing so, I'll realise probably that some of the find and replaces I've done are not a good idea and so I can edit those out or change them and I also realize that there are some things I could add to the Fredit list so when I come to chapter 2 then I've got a slightly uh, modified 
uh, Frederick List. I, I've put it as FR List 1, but I don't, I don't actually change the name. Uh, but it's just indicating that I'm using Fredit with a slightly modified list. Um, and then I work through and edit the whole document chapter by chapter, gradually refining the Fredit list. Um, there's a lot in the Fredit Fred list, as, I'm, as I've said, so that will have to wait for other videos. Um, and then at the end of the job, when I've edited all the chapters, I would use multi-file text again on the new edited files like uh, CH1PB and 2PB and so on, pull those together into a, uh, a file of all the text in the new format as it's been edited. Then I can run a spelling error highlighter and lister on that and what that does is highlights any errors that I've made in doing the editing. So I might have typed in a word, a correction, but I've typed it incorrectly. So I want to pick those up and I end up with a new file. So here we are with our new file. Um, so this is the edited version and then I can use find highlight down to see if any of the if those spelling errors have been highlighted. So that's um, that. Ah, and so there's a spelling error. And um, this is obviously a dummy. I'm, I haven't done this really. So, um, ah, look, it's in chapter three. So I will load up chapter three. Uh, chapter three. There we go. And I will then use find same place which jumps straight across from the list where the errors have been highlighted into the actual text of chapter 3 and there's my error generate so I can correct that. Okay so I'm nearly there let's move that out of the way and what I also do is to use a macro called contents lister by tag because I work on tagging there is a contents lister by style but it's not as well developed because I don't use it but if you use it uh, then we can develop it together and improve it if we need to so what I do is I it when, when I run it it asks me what level of tagging I want to work to and I can say I want to work to up to level E so I've got B to E so um, that will give me all the headings for all those tags right right to the E level tagging which in this case there are some further down somewhere uh, yeah these ones and twos here so you can you can check um, whether the numbering is right although I actually checked that earlier when I'm doing the editing um, and you can just look for in inconsistencies perhaps in the capitalization you may have missed a, a heading that uh, where, where you doing the capitalization um, okay and then so that's just for me to check and then I do one to level two uh, which is this one which is this is the level that um, we actually want for the contents list itself to send to the um, client um, yeah I think that's about it I got to the end on a single take uh, for better or worse, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.